In the course of the history of beauty, strangely enough, even in prosperous times such terrible and simply dangerous procedures were often used, that even today it causes at least amazement, and at most just admiration for women who, in order to be beautiful, often put their own health and life at great risk. You're watching Flip Side of History, and now we will tell you about various procedures of beauty throughout our human history. Let's begin. The Lead, Vinegar, Calcium, Arsenic and Selenium Everyone knows today that contact of these substances with the skin, at a minimum, will lead to chronic diseases and severe consequences. But in antiquity, and even in the enlightened 20th century, these dangerous components were actively used by beautiful women in order to maintain their look. Even during the 18th century, a mixture of vinegar and lead was used to create whitewash, which theoretically gave the face an aristocratic whiteness. And before, there was a common belief that the whiter the skin, the richer and more glamorous was the individual. Apart from that, it also concealed facial blemishes, which was very important during periodic smallpox epidemics. However, the consequences of using such cosmetics were very unfortunate. First of all, beauties began to gray quickly, and secondly, quite often due to toxicity of the body, began severe abdominal pain. Finally, the skin began to peel off strongly and was often covered with sores that could not be healed. When doctors were finally able to prove the harm of lead, it was immediately replaced by arsenic. Yes, it's hard to believe today, but at the beginning of the 20th century there were very popular, for example, harmless arsenic plates to improve the color of the face by Dr. Mackenzie. The consequences of the use of such plates were also disastrous, often starting full baldness, and if a woman stopped using arsenic, her complexion would immediately change in the most bizarre way, basically forcing the lovely ladies to use the dangerous remedy over and over again. Well, for the sake of all fairness, it must be said that arsenic was also actively used in the Middle Ages. It was believed that in small doses, it helped to give the skin elasticity and was generally beneficial to the overall condition of the body. Incidentally, there was not so widespread use of quicksilver. The element in its raw form was used more for the treatment of skin diseases. However, the consequences were not the best either. The vapor poisoning led to a metallic taste in the mouth, depression, serious kidney and liver problems, and up to and including death. In its compound form, sulfur dioxide mercury was also used in the Middle Ages to create a blush. The health effects were virtually the same as with ordinary mercury. The poisonous syrup was actively used by Italian beauties to add expression to their gaze. The poisonous juice actually greatly expanded the eye shades, giving the ladies charm and languidity of the eye. The same remedy, however, sharply impaired eyesight, caused light phobia, and in case of constant use could lead to death. X-ray Cosmetics after Marie Curie discovered radium, it began to be actively used in the cosmetics industry. Radium creams were extensively advertised as amazing and effective products that infused the skin with energy, smoothing out wrinkles and destroying skin imperfections. X-rays have also been widely used to perform various depilatory procedures. Such cosmetology flourished long enough until scientists documented the negative effects of radiation on the human body including complete baldness and the appearance of cancerous tumors. Ancient and Medieval Creepy Procedures In medieval Europe, self-care options with water were, to say the least, not popular. Let's not get into the accompanying smell. But here's how the noble ladies of that time did their hair. It's more like a horror movie scenario. The hair was rubbed with lard or grease, then a tall hairstyle was shaped with all sorts of frames, after which the hair was curled with hot tongs and powdered with lead sprinkles for stability. The irony is that at night such a hairstyle could be devoured by mice with great pleasure. So the beauties, understanding this, slept with their heads in metal cages. The ancient Greeks, like the Romans, used rejuvenating baths vigorously. But there was a little question about the filling of these baths. The best way to make the skin firm and white was considered to be crocodile dung. It was mixed with warm mud and even applied to the face. Beauties could sit for hours either in the bath or with a mask on their pretty faces. Now, how they endured the accompanying smell and insect visits is simply beyond our imagination. Beauty truly requires quite a lot of sacrifices. 
In general, the Greeks and Romans hold a worthy first place in the field of beauty industry. Cleopatra, who developed recipes for depilation with the help of resin, it is frightening to imagine how beauties feel while doing this. And her own blusher, which was prepared on the basis of red bugs, was also placed on the pedestal with them. The Romans, for their part, actively used in cosmetology the sweat of gladiators, which was generally considered an excellent treatment for everything, as well as human urine, which they even rinsed in their mouths to whiten their teeth. The Greeks were more reserved in this regard, for example they used ant eggs for eyebrow dyeing and bad blood for body hair removal. You see, in ancient times all the gifts of nature were actively used, including the waste products. For example, Asian women kept their hair in camel urine to make it shiny, and bird droppings were considered the best makeup remover. In Japan, by the way, an allied cosmetic procedure called geisha mask, created on the basis of the nightingale droppings, has survived to this day. Although it's true that the non-Japanese women did not bother much with the choice of bird, the one that made a pile was the source of the makeup remover ointment. By the way, modern research has shown that the healing properties of bird droppings are due to the guanine it contains, which can not only gently cleanse the skin, but also give it elasticity and shine. And lastly, the women of ancient India chewed the leaves of beetle all the time to give their lips a reddening effect. However, the side effect was almost complete destruction of the teeth. The Eerie Procedures of the Enlightened Ages However, one should not laugh at our ancestors. The 20th century was also characterized by many not just creepy but dangerous beauty treatments. In addition to the use of radium at the beginning of the century, one of the means for weight loss, which returned from non-existence at the end of the 20th century, parasites, was again being actively used. To lose weight, the beauties would swallow a pill with a parasite egg on top of it. It grew up and ate everything in sight. As a result, the patient lost weight and then, taking the second pill, she could, well, theoretically kill the parasite. True, no one asked the opinion of the parasites themselves. And sometimes they not only did not die, but also grew up to a meter, bringing their hosts to terrible torment, up to insanity and, unfortunately, to death. Even more astonishing was the procedure of eyelash extensions, described at the very end of the 19th century. A long hair, usually taken from the head, must be pulled through an ordinary thin needle. Then the lower border of the eyelid is thoroughly cleaned, and for the process to be as painless as possible, it is rubbed with a solution of cocaine. The operator then with a few deft strokes runs the needle along the outermost edges of the eyelid between the epidermis and the lower border of the cartilage of the ossicle. The surgery is even terrifying to imagine. In the first half of the 20th century, there were a huge number of amazing and creepy beauty procedures. For example, the cheek dimple machine was very popular in the USA. And the procedure itself was terribly painful. But what not to do for beauty? The growing popularity of blondes immediately led to a demand for hair whitening, which was done with liquid ammonia, margans, and even with nitric acid. Special heating masks were used to lighten the skin, and the rubber mask, designed in theory to turn the skin pink, frightened everyone around by its mere appearance. As a whole, rubber masks for a variety of purposes were more than popular before World War II. Their constant wearing for several hours allegedly guaranteed an incredible effect on the skin. However, at the same time, there were quite a few curious cases when children were frightened by their own mothers. The procedure to remove freckles, which was used even in the second half of the last century, was also quite horrible. Using liquefied carbon dioxide, the freckle was frozen and a week after it disappeared completely. It is hardly imaginable what the women themselves experienced during this procedure. Thank you for watching our video. Subscribe to Flip Side of History for more videos on the other side of the human history. And also leave a like.